Welcome to Trade the NBA.com. This is John. This report is for G the 14th. Happy Flag Day to everyone in the U.S. Well, uh, we got exactly as we expected. I described to everyone the breakdown that was impending well from back before when it uh, we ran our values and simply that it was just a matter of time and that while everyone was expecting it immediately when we had this uh, brief run-up, um, they thought that you know, there'd be a significant turnaround, but it was just a question of when the reality was going to set in with market players that uh, both the tightening credit situation and um, obviously the global situation was going to eventually unravel itself in a complete way that would be undeniable. And uh, the Fed refusing to back down um, as it sees the situation becoming untenable. Um, we had talked about the Eurozone being potentially one of the early ones to collapse. It looks like Japan is going to be first. So they'll take the lead on that. That's going to have uh, expanded credit uh, risks traveling through. And this is something that uh, has led to all of the uh, uh, systemic problems. It's always been the liquidity, credit issues, uh, counterparty risk and uh, people backing off. But needless to say, we're looking at a uh, continuation of MBI readings here with Magenta continuing to fade. Uh, White's fading a little bit now, so we may get some support about the zero. Uh, not surprising in pre-market, we had a pushback up to that 0%. So we've talked about this before when we break lows. They try to push back up to that break point just to make sure that uh, there isn't any new buy supply with it. It wasn't just one of those uh, quickie uh, you know, everyone uh, trailing off. And that's usually a pretty good gauge as to whether or not it was just a blow off, sell off uh, kind of the condition or if it was something more systemic. In this case, drove all the way back to it and there was just nobody interested in buying it. So it continued to fade uh, further from there. And look at that DOC. Okay, we're getting though into an automatic uh, turnaround point. Minus 23, 24 on the red, uh, absolutely would be bounce back. So, wouldn't be surprised to see. Uh, some attempt at that, that doesn't mean it's going to be sustainable, just something that it's uh, likely to happen within a uh, normal trading range. Minus 27 on DOC green, that's pretty extreme for a daily chart to be showing uh, that kind of level, but. Um, this is all in line with our expectations of, uh, at a minimum, moving back towards the zero percent, particularly when we couldn't break that 50 when I uh, left on my trip, and uh, just glad they waited to do the collapse until after I got back. It was kind of turning to the NQ. NASDAQ's performance is pretty much identical in this particular case, uh, not as bad on its DOC readings, interestingly enough. So, again, it looks like uh, the tech that had been beat up so badly may be the turnaround point. We're also seeing uh, orange dip here with uh, steel crossing. Could be enough to uh, salvage some support. Uh, at least uh, limit the uh, amount of drawdown. Uh, of course, we were already plus 50 on the ES uh, earlier in the morning, and now barely, uh, almost back to even at uh, eight right now. Uh, from a Euro standpoint, uh, getting a little bit of help here again, uh, it gets back into that life-threatening zone again, and this is that extrapolation from uh, Japan's situation going into the EU. Uh, no matter what uh, Lagarde says, nobody was really buying it, and the problem is nobody really wants EU anything, despite the fact she talked about creating all sorts of new facilities and this and that and doing whatever it takes. But uh, the reality is, is that they're basically insolvent without U.S. support. And anytime the U.S. Fed puts uh, that support, you can see the weakness uh, is exacerbated. So how long can the Fed keep uh, European liquidity going as well as Japan? And, uh, you've got both sides begging the, the Fed to, to help them out more. And uh, there are some limitations because, as you can see, in the U.S., rates continue to rise, shutting down, uh, well, basically the real estate economy and that. Rates traveling over 6%. Um, gold isn't doing anything because they're certainly not going to let that run away. Because if you let that run away, that only exacerbates the credit problem even faster. So keeping that uh, under wraps, not to mention the fact that you just have a lot of people who've had to uh, sell color uh, margin situations. And so if you had a um, divert, you know, uh, some of those resources to a uh, gold position, then you might have to liquidate that. But I think that's uh, uh, 
less relevant than what we see from oil because oil belies the lie that takes place in the gold markets and we're here at uh, 12170 uh, on the uh, futures contract for oil so that puts us back at the highs of uh, the beginning of March so you can look for uh, increased pain at the pump from that one it's not going to get better anytime soon um, and in fact, the longer they protract the Russian war, and again, this is all policy error. This isn't anything that has to be, uh, the policies could be changed at any point, but it's going to take a couple of months before you'd see any action. The opportunity was back in March to change the policies, and uh, they were refused. And in that refusal, this is what you get. And this is going to uh, continue to further compound the inflationary uh, pressures. Now, what they're going to claim is inflation is slowing down because it's going to become a month over month increase reduction the prices will still be rising everything will still be getting more expensive but it will be at a slower speed than it happened when it first began a couple months ago so that's how they uh, kind of disguise the, the real uh, readings of things so that it makes it hard to understand uh, the significant impact but all you have to do is look at what gas was few years back in the $2 range and what it is today, and you can see that uh, you're looking at 100 plus percent in energy. Um, in some cases, it's going to be uh, maybe moving towards 200 percent increase, and that is just going to be a significant ripple through everything, at least in 40, 50 percent uh, ranges, not in these, you know, single digits that they keep talking about. So the ultimate question, what does that mean in market terms? Well, here we are, treasuries breaking down 110, as I uh, predicted for you that we would break these lows. Uh, again, moving in that direction because rates have to rise to accommodate the fact that uh, the Fed is not giving up uh, the technique because it doesn't have any choice. Uh, it's hamstrung in this particular case. Uh, they boxed themselves in this corner years ago, and we knew it. Uh, it was just a matter of when it would break. Now, that means that that becomes more attractive for people. Uh, yes, they're willing to lose money on the inflationary side because equities uh, are too dangerous from a capital preservation standpoint. So this is, uh, again, a deflationary driver, which is exactly what they want. They want to try and draw that down. The problem you've got is the cost of those goods that are available continue to rise, and it's going to continue to squeeze. Um, and that's where we're going to start to see uh, layoffs and things like that will be the secondary version coming behind the housing um, pretty much halt uh, you're probably going to see some areas that are still able to uh, continue a little bit but uh, in general you're going to see uh, just a blanket stop uh, we've already seen it in mortgage applications and that and that's like a couple months later uh, and so you know probably by july uh, it's going to be a real crisis from a real estate standpoint. And that just uh, will ripple and it'll take a few months. But like we talked about, the fall would be the typical time that all of this starts to uh, probably the worst timing ever because it's going to be right as uh, midterms happen. And uh, that's going to be quite unpleasant for uh, the parties in power. Uh, from a Bitcoin standpoint, look at this uh, carnage. And again, this is. Um, Again, an arbitrage against some of these crypto agencies and that that have been borrowing and using them as collateral for other items, and uh, this is about taking advantage of weakness. Um, but um, where that support ends, um, you know, it can still drop into the eighteen three range or lower from there uh, because then you get into it confidence crisis and most people holding Bitcoin at this particular stage uh, in the last couple of years now are well underwater if they've well held on to it so um, yeah that's a pretty steep carnage uh, as far as that goes and not working any better ETH barely holding on to the well it's at 11.50 now so we'll see if it can even hold into the uh, thousand range if it breaks below that uh, again I think that would be similar to Bitcoin uh, breaking below the 20,000 barrier and uh, where that leaves people is just going to be uh, holding a serious bag but again Beautiful from a Fed standpoint, because again, it draws a lot of that false liquidity that existed through uh, elevated assets. And as you wipe that out, uh, you pretty much uh, do what the Fed needed to do as far as drying up resources. And maybe they're able to not have to go uh, to the extremes on interest rate rises like we did in the 80s, uh, because these alternatives will definitely uh, pinch um the ability of uh, both consumers and or investors to uh, uh, 
create astronomical valuations of asset prices. So it's all about normalizing. So that appears the 50K continuous drop uh, all the way through, kept shorting every single one of those little setups uh, from the uh, OST. Um, so that worked out, uh, which is actually just the uh, crypto algo on uh, the regular status board. And then here from uh, Friday's action, we saw the short that came in that continued all the way through the open on Monday. Uh, and we are already minus 100 by the time the open happened. So every little pop was just sold off. And that led to another 50% drop from that particular stage by the midday. And um, as I promised, though, there would be some significant rallies, and there were, uh, once we got down to that steep uh, level, we were all the way down here, what was it, 37.50 range, and we rallied all the way up to 38, so uh, it was 38.07, actually, so it was a pretty good pump from that one. Of course, it gave it all back, 80% uh, of it or so, and then we traded in a little bit of range towards the later part, and uh, at that particular point, people realized from Friday's margin situations going into the fall on the Monday, uh, that we're just going to have to liquidate at whatever, and that creates a beautiful little just serious sell-off there, and then once they see that uh, volume fade, there's an opportunity to buy towards the end of the day there. And they did that and shot it up pretty well. Uh, but this particular point, though, we had quite a few positive extremes off that, which we filled. Uh, but we're already back up to that same 3807 that was tested for the middle of the day before. But here we are right back down at the 3750. And um, it's potentially likely, given what we're seeing from 5K, 50K, that we come back at least down to those lows again in the uh, 37. 30 range and see if at that point we're even able to hold 37. I would doubt it at that particular stage. So um, the market's going to be looking for some reassuring comments and stuff. Uh, unlikely to come, uh, other than you know the classes that oh, will provide whatever is necessary to keep things stable because this isn't really all that unstable. It's been pretty clean and orderly uh, from what we see. As always, though, so you can update you with charts on Skype chat. Trade well. Talk to you later.